I came to the Woodstock Festival early because I, I enjoyed those things. And I was not really getting along with the band. Um, and I came on Thursday and I just went out to watch things. And I didn't know that uh, Michael had uh, gotten this idea to film it. And he had hired these film crews that were film crews that had worked on social political things, documentar documentarians, really, but, but social political at that particular time. So they were progressive. Um, and um, I was just hanging around and listening to the music. I saw a lot of the music on Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And on Saturday, the Santana band had trouble getting to the stage. So they asked me if I would entertain the crowd for a few minutes as a solo artist. And I, I hadn't done solo in a couple of years, so I didn't... I, I said that I didn't have a guitar, and they said, well, okay, and they got a guitar, this uh, Yamaha FG150. It's a, it's a cheap, good guitar. And then, that, and then I said, well, I didn't have a guitar strap, so they tied a piece of rope onto it. And then they kind of pushed me out there to be like a jukebox, really, for this crowd. I had no idea what to do because I hadn't played with the band without the band for a long time. And so I just sang some songs, you know, um, uh, an eclectic mix of a few songs. Nobody paid any attention to me at all. And... Uh, I've never been really frightened by outdoor, open-air things in large, large audiences. I feel really comfortable on the stage. So I walked off the stage, and I asked my partner uh, there, who was working on the staff, if it would be okay if I sang Fixing to Die Rag, because I was saving it for the band set later on. And he said, nobody's paying any attention to you, so what difference does it make what you do? And I thought, okay and I went out there and I did the fuck cheer uh, which we had invented um, a year before and um, I yelled out give me an F and the audience looked at me and yelled back F much to my surprise and then I spelled fuck and then they I asked them what's that spelled and they all yelled fuck and then um, I sang the song, and they seemed to know the lyrics, and uh, they seemed to get kind of excited about it. And um, then they started standing up, and so I felt pretty good because, like I said before, what I was doing, they had paid no attention to or had any interest in. And then I uh, left the stage, and then the MC said that was Country Joe McDonald, and that was really the the first time I had been identified as a per, as a solo performer as Country Joe McDonald. So um, I didn't pay any attention to cameras or anything when I was doing that. A vague memory of somebody filming me, I don't know. I wasn't thinking about it. But a couple months later, Michael Wadley asked me to come to Los Angeles to see something, and I, I didn't know what he was... I had no idea what he was what he was going to show me, so we sat down, just the two of us, and a projectionist, in a viewing room in Los Angeles, and he showed me that part of me in the Woodstock film. I couldn't believe it. It was it was unbelievable, really. And he said, "How do you like it?" And I said, "Well, it's great." I. I guess I said great. I don't know. It was I was really surprised. And then one thing led to another, and the movie came out, and the band broke up, and I got um, work as Country Joe McDonald, and uh, labeled because of that identity in the film. Well, for my whole life, really. I think Michael Wadley was very courageous to put me in there, and he. He he wanted he wanted to to make a social political statement with that film aside from just the gathering of these new kinds of people, 
And so putting that, and the song is really different because it doesn't blame soldiers for war. It's a, it's a completely different kind of protest song. And with the fuck cheer in front of it, which is the most taboo word in the American English language, um, it really just kicked the door down. It kicked the door down for, uh, for language and for attitude, because my attitude is so in your face. Um, I'm just there saying, here it is, you know. And, and the attitude of, of the person and the way it places blame. I could only do it because I was an, a military veteran and I was a, a red diaper baby, a product of... Uh, I didn't really like communism, I didn't really like the military, and I had a bad attitude. But it's a fun song and it points the finger at political leaders and the military and parents, you know, saying, um, we're going to do this thing. We're going to fight this war for you, but we don't like it. We think you're full of shit. And uh, fuck you, essentially. It's been my experience in, well, well, 68, it's been 30 years of doing this or 40 years of doing that, that people in the English-speaking countries love to yell fuck. They really love to yell fuck. I don't know why. I watched the film with Michael Wadley, and I watched those people in the audience, because he had a lot of, and, and, and she told me she had to cut to the audience in a lot of spaces because she couldn't sync up my mouth with the, with the, with the audio. I saw the fucking hell, these people were singing the song. I couldn't believe it. I really, I really could not believe it. It was fucking amazing. And I personally think that it was a revolutionary moment, a cultural moment for Anglo-Saxon, English-speaking Western world, that, that that movie was so popular. It mainstreamed the word fuck all those grunge rockers and rappers should give me a, a little royalty for that, for knocking down the door. And I couldn't believe, I have no idea what, what my moment meant, but I know it meant something really important that allowed Faye Dunway in the film Network, I went to see Network. It was like, what, five years or eight years or 10 years after the Woodstock film? Because People got fired for playing the fuck cheer on the radio. DJs lost their jobs. And I, and I watched Faye Dunway in that movie say fuck and motherfucker about 25 times in the movie. And the critics loved the movie and she got paid a lot of money. And I, I couldn't believe it. Because I didn't get really paid a lot of money for doing the fuck cheer and fixing the dye rag. Uh, I don't know, it's all quite mysterious to me.